different you know, terminology. Yeah, except I'm not referring to the part down the middle of the road, unfortunately. All right. Another example of this is along Timberlinks at the ball fields. I haven't actually measured over there. There is a really lengthy strip right across from the entrance to Hiddenbrook, the Hathaway Drive entrance. Really lengthy strip of just glaring sun that I think could use some trees. Where, sorry, say this again on, on near Hathaway? Um, where Hathaway comes into Timberlinks. Oh, yeah. There are all fields. I'm just trying to buy us a little more flexibility in landscaping where it would really be beneficial in providing shade. That strip is adjacent to uh, fencing, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore, you know, it's not limited by this definition. It's adjacent to what? A fencing rather than another road. The fencing of it. I'm not opposed to adding in language that allows, I guess, closer plantings if it's a tree of a type, you know, where the root zone is not damaging. You know, if it's, don't plant a sycamore next to the sidewalk, but right. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm going through Google Street View of the town, you know, especially along James, and th there's tons of trees within the three foot Right next to the sidewalk. I mean, mostly pines. Um, so I'm, I'd be open to considering a, a carve out that allowed certain types of trees to not follow those distance measurements. Using understory trees within that three foot median strip, whatever you want to call it. But isn't that already in there when it says accordance with the three species size classes listed in 13-206? Yes, the, the issue though is that if we have to have three feet between, for even for a small tree, so three feet, five feet, or seven feet for the different classes, that leaves a lot of area where we are not going to be able to plant trees, even though there are currently trees of those sizes and distances in place. Yeah, but can't you do And apparently not causing problems. I, maybe I'm just not getting it. It seems to me that if you have a small space, you plant small trees. You have a medium-sized space, you plant medium-sized trees. You yeah. have a large space, you plant large trees. That's what this is saying. You wouldn't want to plant a big tree in a small place. So in answer to your question, and you would not be able to pl plant large trees along that strip that you're talking about on Timberlinks, because also you'd have a, an ish, a situation where it'd be damaged in the sidewalk. There is no sidewalk there. And how far is it between the fence and the uh, street? I don't know, I haven't measured it. Well, that doesn't apply to this uh, this issue right here, so it's 12, 208. <laughs> no, because there's no, is there a curb there? There's a curb there. Don't know. But it's not between two streets. It's between a fence and a street, so it doesn't apply to 208. Well, yeah, 208 is just for curbs and sidewalks. Exactly. It's any curb. It doesn't have exactly. to be a median curb. Curbs <laughs> or, it it's says curbs, curbs, curbs or curb lines. And sidewalks. Yes. But there's nothing there. There's a curb and a fence. So oh, there is apply. no curb there? I thought there's there was. a curb, but no a fence. It's between a curb and a right. fence. So you couldn't plant a tree within either three feet, five feet, or what's the other one? Seven feet 
of that curve, depending on the size of the tree. Yes, that's what it says. My, my effort here is to try to give us a little more flexibility where trees would be a good idea. But I think well, coming back again, we're talking about small spaces, small trees. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I feel like I, I get the idea of like trying to give us more flexibility, but I mean, I don't think it's a good thing to put a big tree in a small space. I don't know if that's right. like flexibility that we need. We still have flexibility here to plant trees on, on medians, right? We just have to be aware of choosing trees that fit the space. Yeah, that way no damage is caused. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me, unless I'm missing something, Anne. Well, I think about all of the trees lining the streets in Chattanooga. For example, they have the really beautiful non-native lace bark elms, the Chinese elms along 4th Street, very popular street tree for them, that are within a couple of feet of the curb. It's a good sized tree. What does the fire marshal say? <laughs> I thought the fire marshal said that, you know, we had 10 feet of the curb and he'd say it's okay within three. How are we with this? Th that was a distance given to fire hydrants. Okay. And that's, that's one of the things I would like to change. I, I asked Eric about that just a couple of days ago. I said three feet. He said, yeah, we're as long as we can get around the hydrant to work, three feet's fine. But again, that's fire hydrants down in 209. 210, something. It's 209. Yeah. So in 208, do we want to say anything about areas between parking lots and streets? Would that be a way to make that easier? I think curbs and curb lines addresses and sidewalks addresses everything that we would have because a curb line is where you would put a future curb if you didn't already have one. Are you saying a curb are you saying a curb line would reference a parking lot? If it's owned by the town. I'm trying to think of a parking lot that doesn't have curbs, but they have a curb line where a future curb would go based on the zoning for that property. Okay, I, I want it in and y'all don't. So anyone else want it in? Okay. I'd be again open to a carve out for specific types of trees. Consider it, but. Okay. How, how would you like to word that? Okay. Um, well, I mean, I think at this point, I don't know if we consider it, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, five to two vote on any change to this provision. So. It's already been addressed, as Rob said, we have a small tree in a small area. So we can either add the wording to that to have it an understory tree within that median area, but it's still, you've got to suggest the proper tree to go in an area. Which is incumbent upon our plant list, right? Right. I mean, if there's some words that make that clear, 
I, I think, and to, to some benefit, we have increased the size of what is a small, medium, and large tree uh, through our changes. So there is, mm -hmm. I suppose, there's, there's been some movement toward something that could give them more shade. You know, three feet is a really narrow strip. Think about it. Yeah. I mean, it, a tree that's 10 inches in diameter, you still have, you still have a very narrow area between curb and, and sidewalk. And most trees get a little bigger than 10 inches. So, I, you know, and you talk about what's going on in Old Town. You look at the sidewalks, a lot of those tree roots that grow within that narrow strip are disturbing and distorting the sidewalks. Yes, my thought on the James Boulevard median between sidewalk and street would be down close to Alexian that used to have dogwoods all down there. So again, it would be a very small tree going in that space. All right, where's everybody stand on this? Yay, nay, move along. Oh, I'm more covered. modification thereof. I'm with Rob. I think it's covered. I do too. All right, your next thing. I'm getting up because my dog is driving me nuts. So okay. I'm my gonna go. Dog. Let's see something in the air. He's here pawing at me. I have to <laughs> lock mine outside. It's raining. <laughs> it is. It's raining. Thank God. Uh, right. The next one, fire plugs, we can change the three feet because if, if Eric Mitchell has a problem, no problem with that, let's do it. Okay. Okay. The uh, no ground disturbing, the reference, I think the public tree care, your question was what, re what is it reference? So are those are not referencing shrub at all? We're just going to leave. It's, it's You're breaking up, Anne. In 209, trees and shrubs references are inconsistent. So the first sentence is no street tree. So no reference to shrubs. The next sentence, no street tree or shrub. And then the next sentence after that, no street tree without reference to shrub. So everything, we there. everything it's just a it's just a question. Do we want to leave it the way it is or make it consistent? I think it's it the way it is. Okay. I like I vote for consistency. I do too. Put it in Anne. Yeah, it's just a couple words. So yep. how long will it take, Andrew? Okay. All right, 211. You got land, Town's land use plan, the reference, what, are you, what is your question? Um, it says to achieve the goals and follow the guidelines and Town's land use plan. That is extremely broad. Do we want to just leave it open to interpretation, reference some particular section of the land use plan? No, I'd say just, land use plan, wherever it applies, just leave it to that. Yeah, I mean, if anything, you might put the date. But. The town's current land use plan. I mean, I would just. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Current. current. So the next one, the town manager at his, her discretion or upon recommendation by a member of the tree board or consultation with Forrester or ISA Arborist. Did we really want to say or? The conversation in the past has made me think it, we wanted and. Didn't we spend a lot of time with Boyd yeah. on this? Thing? Yeah, we, we did. And? That means every 
Yeah, you to... got two professionals you're trying to get. You know, let's yeah. yeah let's just keep it double the people to pay. Yes. With it written as or, then the town manager can do it completely on their discretion. Right. Boyd has been very good about calling me on trees that he deems that maybe need attention. So I think we've, we've made enough noise to get his attention and the town's attention. If before, that's when, that, that was the problem. That was the problem he had with the initially that before he could do anything, he had to consult with us and he didn't like that at all. So I'd say we leave it as it was. Yeah, I'm fine with whatever you want to do. I just wanted to be sure everyone understood that with the or rather than and, it is completely up to the town manager. He's not going to want to call us every time he needs to make a decision about a tree, and I don't blame him. I recall this being an issue when we had our discussion yeah, with exactly. the town council, um, and there was some, I think he raised some issues about whether or not it was even something that we could require, and I disagree, I think, with where he ended up on that, but I think at the end of the day, this was a change that they were essentially telling us we needed to go back and take out. Right. Okay. I mean, these are for trees that are in unsafe condition or that by reason of its nature is injurious to sewers, elector, whatever, right? I mean, I feel like getting our recommendation or having a professional forester or arborist come in would take time and maybe like this is something that needs to be taken care of more quickly or it could be. Well, if they deem it a hazard, they're going to take it down. That's their right. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next one. No ground disturbing activities. In the prior paragraph to that paragraph, town employees is covered. So I don't see we need to need to add it. Well, the previous paragraph though talks about removing trees, right? And this paragraph talks about disturbing the ground. So I mean, I could see adding it. But it's town. It says activities by private contractors or subcontractors. Employees don't. I, I don't understand why. Uh, why would an employee be going out there and yes yes it's... this this paragraph's written specific to private contractors yes. and contractors okay now I, I do have a question it says permission must be obtained at the and mine has three periods oh that's she just didn't write the whole paragraph oh okay okay I'm yeah, good. that's where it talks. You have to get 48 hours in advance at town hall and oh, okay. ten dollars okay. fee. <clears throat> okay. And 216, I mean, if they've got to replace the sidewalk because of said tree that has a desirable tree, where does that put it? I don't think we need sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs>
So what are you saying in this? Well, I'm asking which, when you say all parts of a tree within the drip line on 216, let's see what it said originally. And this, I, I don't, I, I think all parts of the tree within the drip line, I mean, this, the, the drip line is. Yes, all, all parts of the tree would be within the drip line. Yeah. Thank you. That's Thank the you. definition, by definition of drip line. Okay. And in that area, we need to, where they're talking about replacing trees, uh, Barbara made a good suggestion about the caliper of the tree that it's replacing. We need to yeah. get at least two inch caliper, I think. Uh, um, uh, I know you always used at least one and a half inch or two, two, two inch caliper. That's okay. what Noah used, and I respect his knowledge. Yes. So we added into 216 where the uh, reasonable effort shade made to replace trees that are removed from public property. When they're replacing, they must be at least one and a half, two inch caliper. Yeah, at the at DBH diameter breast height. Right, right. So, do you want to say one and a half to two, or do you want to give a minimum? How about one and a half at least? Minimum, yeah. Yeah. They have the best chance of surviving, according to Noah. Replacement should be a minimum of one and a half inches DBH. Caliper, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. The um, landmark trees. If if we're gonna excuse me, a, I'm I'm sorry, Joe. There's something else there. Yes. In that the. BMPs referenced here are from the Tennessee Division of Forestry. Those are forestry BMPs. Should we not use ISA BMPs that reference a more urban setting? It doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, the, the Tennessee Division of Forestry are, uh, is the urban forester. It's under the Tennessee Division of Forestry. So he should, I think he is probably more aware of issues in urban situations. So I think that's, I think that TDF is a good thing. That's my opinion. So we okay. that. When, I, when I got on the Division of Forestry website and looked at their BMPs, they were referencing things like landings for timber operations, et cetera. ISB, ISA BMPs are referencing things like construction around trees and protecting the drip zone. Whatever, okay. Use ISA then. Is everyone good with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if that's what's most applicable. Okay. Okay, next, the landmark trees. We don't have a, uh, if we do set up a landmark tree situation, tree board would set that up. My questions were simply, do we want to say anything about that? So we, we have one landmark tree. We did the poplar. Uh, right. The way we did that was we drafted the resolution that the town council then adopted. Um, so I don't know if that's going to become the consistent practice. If so, then that's already kind of our record keeping method because there's a resolution adopted by the town for each single landmark tree. Uh, but yes, so, th so that is the way they become landmark trees. I didn't know if we needed to maintain a list if we got a dozen of them, for example. Well, the resolutions and are on town hall website. Yes, if you wanted to go back and remember. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a landmark tree program. I think that's something that we should discuss in the future 
And if we decide to do that, could we do can we do that by resolution? I don't know the answer to that, but that would be fine. Makes sense. And do we want to have any kind of special protection for landmark trees? I think we would probably decide that if we decided to have a program. Mm -hmm. So there's, which is fine. So there's currently no particular protection on the poplar. Except public um, outcry, I know. Okay. And on the last thing, we've got uh, penalties. So we're going to have consultation with the tree board, which would call out an arborist to say how much that tree is worth. I think in another area of the tree board, it isn't there an area where you, we consult a um, database that gives us the value of trees in uh, public trees? Didn't we look at that? Yeah. Um, what I, you're remember, I remember something about that. What you're referencing, Barbara, may be uh, the ISA guide to mm -hmm. estimating the value of trees. I don't remember whether we had that in our ordinances anywhere. Paul, I hate to do this, but I, I have to, to, to leave at this point in time. Thank you, Andrew. See you Thank you. Next meeting. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and if I, I, I don't recall doing it, uh, but uh, I approve the minutes if that if we hadn't already that I approved the minutes from yeah. last week. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. A second. Yeah. All right. So, um, where were we? Um, the penalties. There was something in, I don't know if it was what area we were talking about it. Um, Early on. 13, yeah, early on, um, if in like in a, a subdivision or what have you, or they destroyed a tree that we would reference, uh, call somebody out to say who, how much it was worth and all that other good stuff. I think I remember that when it got its eons ago, and I know I'm dragging things out, I'm sorry, but there was a, um, a commercial uh, business that damaged a tree on Signal Mountain and the council at that time uh, charged that co that commercial business a price that was determined by there is there is a site that will um, give you the value of a, a full-grown tree in a certain area now we can say at the consultation with the tree board and that that will cover that we can we can look into it at that right. point Okay, I'm good with that. That about cover it? I, and yes. Then um, that is my uh, Questions. Barbara, you had also said something about wanting to build in best planting practices and best cultivation practices for replacement trees. Do you, well, did you I have anything at particular our, there? Our list. And we talked about uh, light preferences and moisture to dry, you know, the moisture preferences. And if people plant things, you're breaking they, up. They, you're up. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm worried about what they're going to do and at Lena Gibbons. I'm concerned that they'll plant the, the tree in the wrong place. But this, um, uh oh. What did I do? I'm gone? No, you're not gone. No, now you're back. I kind of went in and out a little bit. I don't bit. know. I don't, I'm let, look, I'm, I'm a victim of this computer. <laughs> People, where to plant trees we, and how to plant them. Help? Pardon me? We send help. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
<laughs> I have grandchildren, that's it, but they're all COVID. Anyway, um, I think the list, this list tells us this. We no longer, we can't plant trees that require special care. I'd love to plant hemlocks. I can plant a hemlock, but how do I know after I'm dead, somebody's going to take care of that hemlock? Answer me, somebody. <laughs> Don't. Well, I, I hear what you're saying, Barbara, and I, to some extent, feel the same way. At the same time, who knows if anyone's going to take care of any of our trees? And an example of that is they plant a new tree and then they don't water it. Doesn't matter what its species is, it needs water in its first year. That, that's the only thing we can do. And if the thing is, Anne, if the tree board is responsible, my problem is with the honor trees. That if we plant trees that we are responsible for replacing ad infinitum, then we need to plant trees that are in an area where there be water, there'll be you know care, and that don't have disease issues. And that's my 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 issue. Yes, and I think those are are really good points to raise. Um, what I'm kind of running into is that our recommended tree list is for honor trees. It's for trees anywhere on municipal property. And it's a list that, that private residential landscapers are going to be referencing because it's on our website. Yes. So those are three sort of different circumstances. How? Do we want... Do we want to leave off valuable native trees just because we don't want to be the ones responsible or or we well, well, it, it gives them an out to plant something and say, well, I'm sorry, it died. You know, I'd rather have something that's hardy that will survive. Yeah, we can't list every possible tree out there. If the landscaper's worth his salt, he'll be able to recommend something that don't live. Now, as far as taking care of them, when we do plant an honor tree, do we have a conversation with the public works um, <laughs> supervisor and say, hey, here's this tree. You need to stop by and water it a couple times a week for six months. No. Do that? no. No. And we don't have yeah. any. That's why yeah, and that's not the kind of thing you put in an ordinance. That's an implementation. Exactly. Not, a, <laughs> not an ordinance thing. Yeah, and an example of what's happening now is that an honor tree was put in at the Rainbow Lake Trailhead. It's a red bud, so native, pretty hardy. So the top half of it is dead, and perhaps that's because it hasn't gotten any water. But there's no source of water there either. We yeah. don't plant trees where there are no sources of water. That's right. an issue. And the red bud's an understory tree anyway. And they're hardy as hell, so they'll come back yeah. in the root. They're, all, they're almost invasive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, is everybody finished with that that portion of it? So we can move on to Arbor Day. We got people that are Please. trying to Arbor wrap Day. things up. Move on, Joe. Um, the Arbor Day is set up for uh, October 23rd. We're gonna, we have enterprise helping, but they're not able to give any monies. We determined that we're gonna be pulling monies out of our fund. Um, we're gonna be replacing uh, and adding, I guess we decided on nine trees like we did last year. Uh, we're gonna do, do we wanna spread out the times or do we wanna have two different crews at two different tree, two different locations? At the I same think so. At, at what happened last year, we had all this help, a thousand people at Nolan, and then we were went over, we, we were late and doing that, and they all had to get back to work. So could we kind of say, can you all show up at nine at Nolan and, or, or, and at you know, 11 or 12 or whatever at Thrasher so that we can get portions of them? Do you remember not that they were, they left? Oh yeah, I remember. Well, part of that was due to um, uh, yeah, we had we the got principal didn't had class issues or something, and we had yeah, to go yeah. back. Yeah, 
Yeah. But he seems to be on board this year, so I would say it's going to work out. But we can still um, – they're more worried about social distancing. So we can set one up at 9 and then go over to the other one at 11. Have half and half. You know, have, the, you know, have them platoon. They're, so they'll have fewer of them, so they'll be more distant. Right, right. Okay. Uh, so we still go with uh, four trees at Nolan and four trees at Thrasher and one at CCS? I think, you know, I'm cheap. I'd rather go three and three and one, but that's okay. We've got, well, we've got, we've got two trees at Nolan um, to... They have to be replaced. At Thrasher to replace that have died. Um, Lack of water, probably. I would imagine so. Yeah. Um, I know when I drove through there the other day, I noticed two of them were dead that we planted. Um, so, but there's two areas in the back or another area in the back, we could have spot for two trees. So if we wanted to do four, we could, we spent $500 last year for nine trees. Okay. So how everybody feels about that, we can, you know. If, if we can do that for 500, I'm okay. Okay. How's everybody uh, else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to do nine and 11. Yeah. Okay. What do y'all think? One? Which one switch? Uh, Thrasher at nine. That's what we usually start there first. It doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. No, we usually start at the other one. At first. Nolan. You were yeah, at Nolan we last. At Nolan first. Um, that's fine. We'll start at Nolan first at nine o'clock. Um, Rob, are you going to be able to help on Thursday to dig holes? Should be. Okay. We'll be able to probably, um, borrow the town auger like we did last year, but I don't. <laughs> I didn't use the auger. Town auger. No, Clyde, <laughs> Clyde used a post hole digger and, and, and pickaxe. Uh, I was with him. We tried to use the auger. <laughs> <laughs> Brown was so dry, it was like desert rock. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Give me those times again. Uh, no nine, o'clock, nine o'clock at uh, Thrasher. Okay, Thrasher. Oh, nine nine o'clock at Nolan. Nine o'clock okay. at Nolan. And then uh, Thrasher planting at 11. When's uh, lunch at, at those for those kids? I don't know. I'll have to find out. I think it'd be it's earlier. All, it's all like spread out more now because of COVID too. Like there's, I think yeah. they, they probably start eating lunch at like 9.30. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I, like I eat lunch at like 11 at school. So it might be earlier than noon. Okay. Um, oh. And as far as digging holes the day before, we can set up a time and just go out there and do it. Okay. And if you need Clyde, he'll help. Okay. Anything else? The only thing I want to do is have some money if I have to pay an arborist. Well, we've got a budget and we've, we've been replacing the monies we used. Uh, Michaela, you spent you sent the five hundred. Didn't I thought we had more than that? Did we already have enough to cover? We the, had four hundred on the actual GoFundMe account, and then I had a hundred from myself and a couple of my friends. But that was our cap, and that was what I limited at. And I've extended the GoFundMe to see if anyone else will donate, so we can make another one for whatever else we need. Right. Um, Barbara, I guess that was the monies you got. That was the, that was, we were 400 that, that was part of Ann's and mine. And we also got another 30 cause Clyde treated a nice little lady's tree for free. Okay. And so she gave him a $30 donation. So that was like nine 30. We've got money. But so we, I'm got, more, I, we, go did, ahead, we got enough money to pay that we pay back the poplar cabling. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. We have 500 so we can pay that back. Okay. I was, if, if John Nestle won't do it for free, I was thinking that perhaps we could, I, I could contact different, you know, recommended arborists, ISA certified arborists in town, and tell them that this is an opportunity to get themselves, you know, um, a, a, a known up here 
and they could we pay them, but we would give them a minimal amount so that they could look at different trees in different neighborhoods that were caught were dying and give us some information about why so we could help people. Well, we can. Re I'll reach out to John Nessel, and he he offered to do it before, so I can ask him when he's going to be up on the mountain. I'd just like to have him make one trip, you know, yes. rather than bring him up several times. Yeah, I'd like to have someone look at the uh, yellow woods over at the recycle center. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. They're dying. Yes. Well. Uh, make a list, I guess, of the trees, areas that we want to talk about. And okay. We can look at that tree at, um, at, at um, the those Mac? trees, the, the Mac, yes. And yeah. Yes. And we, I probably ought to go down and there was there, a lot of poplars, young poplars have been dying. I'd like to know why they are dying. Okay. Uh, well, again, we'll make a list and I'll get with John and ask him when he's going to be up on the mountain again. So what, what sort of time frame are you looking at for, for that, Joe? Are you thinking like in the next couple of weeks or two months out? Or? Well, I'll see what his schedule is. I mean, I, I don't really, I can't, I'm, if he's going to do it for free, I, I'll reach out to him. But as far as when he's coming up, I can't say when that'll be. Sure. So just get me the list of the areas we want to talk about, and then I'll ask him when he's coming up, and we'll go from there. Okay. okay. Now, if we've got some widespread disease looking trees across the town, like you were talking about, Barbara, with the young populars, is that something the urban forestry group might send somebody out or might have some insights? I've talked to some people in the, with the TDF, and our, our illustrious governor has, has reduced the budget for the, um, the TDF and the urban forester. I don't know. Okay. okay. But where did you see them? Are they in um, the right Rainbow Lake area? Can we, we, we get them down there, get John or somebody down there to look? I've seen young poplars all over that are turning brown early. Well, that's, I, I think, drought, huh? Is that drought? Well, normally it's a drought, but it's been so wet, I was surprised. It's not I would been wet. Think it's drought. <laughs> it may be wet where you live. It's dry as hell here. Sorry. I don't think I've had more than two or three days without rain in like over a month. We've had, and we've, and, and where I live, we've had six tenths of an inch of rain since September started. Oh, wow. It's so weird and spotty up here. Like you'll be in one part of the mountain and get a ton of rain and come home and it's dry or vice yeah. versa all the right. time. Right. Yeah, it's really interesting that as you go further north out the plateau, yeah. it, the weather patterns are much stronger the further out you go. Yeah, we were so, recently moved from like um, the area back by like St. Ives to mm. Old Town and it's hotter here. Like we have the same thermometer that we had at the house there. And like, <laughs> it's always hotter here than when we go visit our old neighbors there, it always feels so cool. Cause we were like- 400, the front of the mountain is 400 feet lower than where I live. Really? So that, so, yeah, yeah it's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, and, and out at Boston Branch where you are, Rob, Mm -hmm. You get rain so much more often than we do in Old Town. I almost didn't get my gas installed for a month because it rained just about every other day. I hate you. <laughs> my water bill's <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Listen, people, please let me know. Get you know, send Joe your your tree locations so he can have that. I'll send Joe the locations, okay? okay. And let's please start thinking about next spring. I went to a wild ones. Um, native plant sale uh, last weekend and mm -hmm. everybody was masked and it was perfectly okay. And I talked to Avery with uh, uh, Overhill Gardens and I talked to another man who has a tree area. He grows small trees, one, two, and three uh, gallon pots and he will give them like a $15 tree. He'll give them to us for five. So, I mean, we've uh, made contact. So let's think about what we can do next spring. Okay, please. Sounds good. Yes. Well, after all this, I mean, I don't, it's not gonna be over, but after all this 
Covidatating's over with. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> we'll be able to get some stuff done. I don't think the fall is the time to do it, but uh, next spring we'll be able to do it for sure. Hey Joe, that that list that you sent out a couple of weeks ago was that the one for our tree giveaway? The list. You sent a yeah. list of trees that were available and wanted us to pick what we wanted, but oh no 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 that that was the invoice from last year. No, it wasn't, Joe. You sent out an, uh, a thing that says these are the trees that are available for our March giveaway. And I sent you an email back and I said, Joe, that doesn't look like it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it. yeah. That, yeah, that's our, uh, that was what the list they sent me. The PDF, uh, yeah, sent it, yeah. Yeah, the, this thing. There you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what's available. And if you'll notice in the hardwood species, they've just got it listed differently than they have in the past. But they usually had availability numbers and they don't have that anymore. No. No, they don't. Well, we're early on the list, so. So let's get our, yeah. Yeah. Take them out, people. Do you need him to send them out again? That'd be great. Okay. Can, Joe, can you do that? Okay. I can. I can. I, do you want me to send you what I sent again, or do you have it? No, I still have it. Okay. Then I'm, I'm good then. I'm okay. the obedient one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so is that it? We've got future meetings. Uh, we want to get through Arbor Day. We want to do the, what is it, third Thursday, fourth Thursday? Let's see. 23rd is, a, is the fourth Friday. So the third Thursday is the 15th. Okay. Y'all want to meet? I think we ought to. We ought to get together before Arbor Day, don't you think? Just to yeah. make sure. Yes. Got everything finalized. Right. Yes. Okay. So, so the fifth, go ahead. What What are the day and date, and what time? The fifteenth is the third Thursday. The fourth Thursday is the twenty second. We usually meet on the fourth. Are you saying move it up to the third? Well, yeah, don't you think? Well, because yeah, we got that'll give us a week to get Arbor Day straightened out time wise. Yeah. I mean, we can do it via email, but because um, all it is is going to be timing issues. And going, we can get together and go down to the barn, Joe and Ann, and who else would like to go? Yeah, just like we did last year. Okay. So, do we want to make a date for us to go down there? Uh, we can. Um, well, I know your social calendar is busy, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, not this month, but next month it is. Okay. Um, actually, this month and then November. Um, so we could go down uh, the 16th, um, the okay, week before. I can do it. I can do it. Can you do it, Ann? I think we lost Ann. Hello? Ann, okay. you there? Frozen. All right, yeah. who else would like to go? Uh, Rob? What? Would you like to go? Or, I mean, if you, you're welcome. I mean, let's, or we can just get this done and forget it, okay? Just get it done. If y'all okay. need to help carry something or do something. No, no, the town picks them up, so we're good. Yeah, they deliver them. They deliver them. So I just don't want to exclude anybody. Out. If y'all were just going picking, then. We're picking, okay. honey. Picking and chilling. <laughs> picking and grinning. Okay. Okay. I think that, so October 16th is when we're going to go look at trees. And October 15th, we'll have a meeting. Is that right? Correct. That's what I heard. Okay. What time is the meeting and what time are we going to the barn? Uh. uh the barn, let's say we get down there by about 10.30 or 11. Okay, is okay. 5 o'clock good for a meeting for everyone or do you need later or early, what? 5 o'clock works. Okay, 5 o'clock. Right. 5 o'clock. How about you, Michaela? That's it's fine okay. for me. As long okay. as it's after four, it's fine for me. Okay, well, I think Andrew might, well. Yeah, we'll, we'll reach we'll out. 
So our meeting is Thursday, October 15th at five o'clock, and we're going to go to the barn at 1030 on October the 16th. Correct. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, the only other thing I really would like for us to talk about, we need a tree canopy report. How are we going to get that? It's forestry. Been and does someone have a contact? I tried, well, we, I tried to contact the last person several times and I never got through to anybody, never got any replies. So. The, Brian, the Brian man, I can't remember his name. He's retired. This is, I'm um, sorry, it's Tennessee Division of Forestry. Yes, urban Forestry. Let me see if I know anybody there. It has to be oh. Urban Forestry. Oh, I see Urban Forest. Yes. Let me see who they're, oh, Urban Forestry staff. Yeah, I, there's only three. I sent an email to a couple of people in there and never got a reply and called a number and never got through. But I, I'll try again. It looks like they only have three people that do Urban Forestry. They've cut the budget. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why, but I guess because it's, I don't know. I will, I will go online and call those people between now and the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. I had a name before, and I was trying to contact that name that had done it before. But I think he retired. The, the, the one we've had, he retired. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll just start plugging away on the other three then, see who replies. Thank you. I, I think it's important to try to get the same technique use so it's really a comparable report yeah. if, if we can't get that then we'll do a fallback and see if we can get it some other way but that would certainly yeah, be preferable I, I was doing that and then things kind of fell through the cracks so i need to follow up on that thank you rob thank you rob You're welcome. okay is that it thank you joe All thank right. you joe. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. 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 Bye.